What's growing on, gardeners? It is a gorgeous fall afternoon here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Today, we are going to harvest our sweet potatoes, and we're going to compare our production with our sweet potatoes in containers versus our sweet potatoes in ground and see which method is more productive, and I will make sure to give you lots of sweet potato growing tips along the way. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications, and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designs designed apparel and other gear, your support is greatly appreciated. I've been growing sweet potatoes for about five years now, and I've learned a tremendous amount of information in those five years. On one hand, sweet potatoes can be one of the easiest crops that you can grow here in the South. That's because sweet potatoes absolutely love heat, humidity, and rainfall. The more disgusting and miserable and wet our summers are, the better the sweet potatoes will grow. So for that, they're one of those really easy, set it and forget it kind of of crops that can grow in miserable conditions. But on the other hand, sweet potatoes come with a big learning curve because they are highly sensitive to over fertilizing. I learned this the hard way last year. You see, two years ago, I had an incredible harvest of sweet potatoes. I planted the slips in the ground in May, and then I basically forgot about them and did absolutely nothing to them until I dug them up in November. And what I got was an absolutely monster haul of tubers. So I thought, since my crop did that well, when I did absolutely nothing to them, what would happen if I doubled down and I really took care of them? So that's what I did. I strongly amended my bed with lots of compost. I planted the slips. I gave them additional fertilizer. I treated them to fish emulsion every now and again. And I had the most beautiful, out of control, vining everywhere, sweet potato vines that I've ever had. And I thought I was going to have an incredible harvest, but I dug them up. And what I found was there was almost nothing there. I had a very puny tuber harvest. So after that disappointing harvest, I did a lot of research to figure out what I did wrong. And what I found was that sweet potatoes actually like growing in low nutrient soil. They like to grow in a sandy loam with not a lot of organic matter. They want to be fortified with bone meal because that has lots of phosphorus. And they want to be fortified with things like wood ash because that contains a lot of potassium. But nitrogen is actually the enemy of sweet potato tuber development. That means compost is actually actually the enemy of growing sweet potatoes. So if you put a lot of compost in your soil, that organic matter will turn into nitrogen and you will get incredible looking sweet potato vines, but you'll have very poor tuber production. So basically, when it comes to growing sweet potatoes, for the most part, the better looking your vines, the worse your production will be. So this year, I decided I was going to give my sweet potato slips a lot less compost. I only amended this bed with a single bag of compost and I used mostly bone meal. I didn't give the sweet potatoes a whole lot of fertilizer, especially fertilizer that contained nitrogen. So I was hoping that this would increase my tuber development, but looking at how lush and gorgeous my sweet potato vines are, I'm still afraid that my soil is too fertile and it has too much organic matter in it, and I may not get great tuber development because I gave it too much nitrogen still. Now my sweet potatoes that are growing in these 20 gallon fabric grow bags, in theory, should be more resistant to the over fertilizing problem. That's because they are growing in potting mix that is rich in peat. So there's a lot less organic matter and very little compost by comparison. And also because we get so much rain in the summer here, these bags are constantly being flushed out of excess nitrogen. So overall, these should be growing in a fairly nitrogen poor environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest these sweet potatoes potatoes in containers, and I'm going to compare the haul to what I get in my garden bed where over fertilizing may be a problem, and we'll be able to take a look at those results and see what we have. Now, what I'm going to do is, to make my life a lot easier, I'm going to take a pair of pruning shears, and I'm going to remove all of the vines. Then once the vines are removed, I'm going to lay down a tarp, and I'm going to dump out the contents of the sweet potato buckets on the tarp, because that will make it a lot easier to find all of the tubers and also I'll be able to reuse all of that potting mix for growing things in the fall and winter. Okay, now I harvested all of the sweet potatoes and here are the fruits of our labor, or lack of labor really, because I did virtually nothing to these containers to achieve this harvest. So the purple skin potatoes that you see back here are the Murasaki sweet potatoes, which are 
bred to be a Japanese type, but they were actually bred down in, I think, Louisiana to be very well adapted to the southern conditions here in the southern United States. So they produced a really great harvest. The white-skinned sweet potatoes are the Okinawans, and they are notoriously expensive because of their relatively low production. So that's why they're probably so incredibly expensive, like $4 a pound at the grocery store. Now you can see all of the root mass left over from the Okinawans. There is just a ton of root matter in here that never actually properly turned into tubers. Maybe that's my mistake. Maybe that's just because it is a notoriously difficult variety to grow. I have probably half the amount of leftover root mass from the Murasakis. They grow a lot better around here. So overall, for a near zero effort harvest, that is a lot of sweet potatoes grown in these containers. And I basically screened all the soil. I tried to pull a lot of the roots out. And I'll probably use these to grow lettuce up against my house all winter long. So all in all, I would say that is a pretty good sweet potato harvest out of those two containers. I'm really happy with that. So now I'm going to go into my garden and I'm going to see how the raised beds did by comparison. But I'll tell you what, I think it's about time I start investing in some of those gardening sleeves that I see all over the place. Uh, maybe it's about time that some Millennial Gardener branded gardening sleeves exist. What do you all think of that? Would you all want something like that? Maybe I could look into it. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to dig up the sweet potatoes in my garden. Now we have all of the sweet potato vines removed, so now we're going to start pulling them up from the roots and digging around to see what kind of harvest we're dealing with. Here is the harvest that came out of this raised bed. Now again, how big is this raised bed? It is four feet by six feet. So this entire fairly sizable raised bed, at least when compared to the two containers that I grew my potatoes in, this is all I got out of this whole raised bed. Now the potatoes right here are a blend of Murasaki and Stokes Purple. I can't tell which is which. The Murasaki has white flesh and the Stokes Purple has purple flesh, so I won't know until I peel back the skins. These right here are all of the Okinawan sweet potatoes that I got out of this entire bed. So you can see how terrible the production of the Okinawans were. This was an absolute disaster really terrible. So now that you see this harvest out of this raised bed, I'm going to take these and compare them right up against the harvest I got out of my containers. Now they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Hopefully this video is worth a million views because what I see right here is absolutely incredible. Now all of these potatoes were taken out of my raised bed and I fit all of them comfortably in this five gallon pot. I put them in this five gallon bucket and I carry them over here and arrange them. The containers, they took two of these buckets, really one and a half. So all of the Murasakis alone out of one container was as much mass as all of the potatoes out of that raised bed at once. So it's clear that I got dramatically more production out of the two containers than I did out of my raised beds. The other thing that you'll notice is the potatoes that I got out of my raised beds are small. I got a lot of little tiny potatoes that I'm not really going to be able to do a whole bunch with. Meanwhile, some of the potatoes, all the potatoes, I got out of my containers for the most part are gigantic and I think the problem is in my raised beds all of the roots they wanted to meander all around the place so all around the, the, the meandering roots they made these little tiny potatoes whereas the root bound sweet potatoes in the containers had nowhere to go so they couldn't meander so the potatoes got really large so I think it's entirely possible that I could maybe grow two entire crops of sweet potatoes in containers in my growing season because that root restriction for whatever reason seems to produce larger potatoes so really impressed by what I got out of those two little tiny containers and you can really see what I'm talking about when it comes to the fertility of my soil this is honestly a fairly pathetic haul out of that entire raised bed I should have ten times the amount of potatoes that I got out of that whole big raised bed than those two little containers but that's not what you see the containers outperformed so now that we have the results of our compassion does that mean that sweet potatoes grown in containers are superior to sweet potatoes grown in ground? 
No, it is very important that you don't misunderstand these results. You are never going to have the better potential for production when it comes to really any kind of plant than when you plant them in ground. A container is always going to restrict the maximum of the production. So when you have ideal conditions, you're always going to have better results growing in ground. What this experiment has shown us is that it is a lot easier to grow sweet potatoes in containers. And that's because you can control the soil. Sweet potatoes don't like organic matter. It grows vines instead of tubers. So because we grew those sweet potatoes in peat without a whole lot of organic matter and the containers were constantly being flushed by the rain, we were in a nitrogen restricted environment. And the sweet potato tubers for that reason flourished. My raised bed garden is just too fertile to have great sweet potato production. It produces vines better than it produces tubers. And I'm not going to sabotage the fertility of my garden just for the sake of growing better sweet potatoes. Now, that being said, if I own several acres in Florida, you better bet that I would reserve a 20 foot by 20 foot plot of that crummy nematode riddled sand. And I would plant my sweet potatoes in there constantly and not do a whole lot, except maybe give them bone meal and some wood ash from, uh, from burning in a fire pit or something like that. Because I bet you I would get absolutely incredible production in ground in that kind of low-end sandy soil. That is what sweet potatoes like. So here's my takeaway. If you have the proper sand, the proper growing environment, and the space to grow sweet potatoes in ground, do it. They will grow great in sandy loam. They like that Florida, Georgia, Carolina sandy soil. If you have those conditions, you will probably be able to maximize your sweet potato harvest. That being said, if you're like me and you own a standard residential plot of land and you have just a couple of raised beds to grow in, I regret ever planting those sweet potatoes in my raised beds. Not only do they not perform well, but they're incredibly invasive. The winter never kills them. They come back every year. So wherever you plant them, prepare for sweet potatoes to come up for many, many years to come. All of the tubers are growing underneath the aisles and underneath the weed barrier in between beds. They're a mess. They're taking over the entire area. So I wish I never put them in there because they're becoming problematic. So what I'm probably going to do from now on, I'm more than likely going to stop planting my sweet potatoes in my raised bed garden because it's just not the right environment for growing them. And I'm going to double, if not triple down and set up a whole bunch more of those 20 gallon fabric grow bags to grow sweet sweet potatoes in next year because they performed absolutely brilliantly and it's so much easier and they're so much easier to harvest. Digging up all of those sweet potatoes for that lousy harvest was absolutely miserable in the raised bed garden, but it was pretty easy doing it in the containers because I was able to just kind of dump them and pull them apart. So if you're like me and you're in a regular backyard gardening situation, I think the sweet potatoes in the containers are the way to go. Now I have all the sweet potatoes that I just harvested curing upstairs in my office in my homemade humidity chamber. That's because sweet potatoes, to maximize sweetness and storage life, they need to cure for about 10 to 14 days at around 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit with close to 90% humidity. And in this box, I have it sitting on top of a seedling heat mat. And then I also use a heat mat thermostat that is set to the proper temperature. And you can see all the humidity that collected inside of this chamber because of the water source inside. And I have extensive videos on how to create your own humidity chamber and also cure and store your sweet potatoes. I will link to a video down in the video description that shows you how to easily and cheaply build this exact box. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, or any of the products that I featured in this video, like the fertilizers I use, like bone meal to enhance sweet potato production, as well as the fabric grow bags that I grow in, I'll link them all down in the video description for your convenience. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you you again on the next video. Dale is upstairs on his bed right now and I just want to run a little experiment on how sensitive his ears are. Nothing. Oh my goodness, I hear thunder. Here he is! Here he is! So Dale knows that's not his walk sound, but he knows 
That is his walk sound. You want to go for a walk, buddy? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Look at that sniffer. Look at that tail go. Whack, 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 whack. All right, buddy. We'll go for a walk.